Hi guys, it's just Jack on Sports here. I have another very special guest with me today. His name is Pete Foxy. He's a part. He was a part of the Milwaukee Brewers farm system, and right now he's the current owner of AP Academy in Palmer, Massachusetts. So today we're just gonna be asking you a couple questions. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So Pete, how old were you when you started playing baseball, and what did you love about the game? So I first started playing baseball when I was ten. My dad was a college baseball player. My uncle was a college baseball player. Um, he was a scout for a little while, and uh, baseball is just kind of in our bloodline. So I always was around the game, um, something I love to do all throughout my life. And you also played hockey growing up, right? Correct. And what made what made you decide to stay with baseball? Um, baseball is always something I had a great uh, appreciation for, a lot of passion for. Um, I was. You know, fortunate enough to play in a really good hockey program, but um, there just kind of came a time where I was enjoying myself playing baseball, and it was something I felt I could do for the next, you know, 10 years of my uh, my career. So it was ultimately that's what kind of what it came down to. Hockey started to become more of like a job, and baseball was more of a passion for me. Yeah. And can you talk a little about your experience playing college baseball at UConn? Mm -hmm. it's the best decision I ever made in my life. Um, Coach Penders, uh, UConn baseball. Uh, who actually most recently just cracked the top 25 this week with a, uh, another sweep uh, in the America Conference. Um, but he created so much structure for me. I learned a ton about myself as a baseball player, as a person. And um, you know, ultimately, not only did they give me the tools to be a successful baseball player, but they helped create the foundation that I use today at the academy. Yeah. And you had an opportunity to play summer baseball on Cape Cod, but you had already committed to play elsewhere. Can you talk about how hard of a decision that may have been for you? Well, yeah, I mean, at the time it, it really wasn't that difficult because it was uh, the Cape uh, for a potential um, uh, kind of a temporary roster spot or, uh, you know, the MLB draft. When I got drafted, uh, the prospect of getting drafted, to me that was obviously the most important thing at that time. So uh, kind of deciding to stay local and, and be around for an extra week and um, gracefully the uh, the uh, Holyoke Blue Sox at the time, they were willing to you know, kind of keep me around and keep me ready to go as I waited for the draft. Yeah. And where were you and who were you with when the Brewers contacted you and what was your reaction? So my roommate was actually living at home at my house with me. Uh, he was playing in the uh, NECBL in Holyoke. Uh, we actually went to college together. We were college roommates as well. Um, we watched the draft all day on TV and my name didn't get called. And I was a little, dis you know, a little, little disappointed around the 20th round. So. Got my car headed to batting practice, and as soon as I got to the field, the uh, uh, with my teammates, the manager um, came out to the field uh, with his phone that I had just gotten drafted, and immediately my phone was, uh, you know, blown up with text messages, oh, yeah, phone sure. calls. It's pretty cool. It's, it's a pretty neat experience in general. And you spent roughly about four seasons in the minor leagues. Um, what were some of your most memorable personal moments? Most memorable. I think the first. Uh, the first hit I ever got was pretty pretty memorable. I remember it was a, it was a single left field, um, and it just, you know, you kind of don't realize how quickly everything moves, the transition from college to pro ball. Um, it's really surreal, you can think about your whole life, um, and all of a sudden, you know, to kind of get the elephant off your back, so to speak, get your first hit, and kind of relax from there, understanding it's still the same game, base pass is still 90 feet. Um, that was pretty awesome. In spring training, I got to play a couple big league games, um, I got to, you know, obviously be with, uh, at the time, with Ryan Brown, with Ricky Weeks, Craig Council, all those guys that dug out, and that's a pretty cool experience when you're up there with uh, the best of the best. Um, but ultimately, I think the, uh, one of the one of the coolest moments, um, in my last year I played in Florence, and we had a really good team, Florence, Kentucky, and uh, we had uh, one of my teammates, we were down by three, going to the last inning bases, loaded kids to walk off home run to send us into game five of the divisional series, which we ended up winning. That was probably the coolest moment of my life. I've never been from such a, I thought I was packing my bags and going home to, and we got one more game to stay alive, and we actually won the game. So yeah. it was a really, really cool swing of emotions, for sure. Yeah. And when did you know that playing Major League Baseball is probably not going to happen for you? So it was probably my last off offseason. Um, I didn't get a call. I had a really good, I had a really good year, um, and I, I didn't get a call back um, to go to spring training with any Major League clubs. Um, I had a contract to go back and play independent ball which I was prepared to do so, and then um, I was giving lessons one day, and I just kind of realized that I started to get more excited for 
other people when yeah. they figured things out and when they were going through their process than I was getting for my own. And at that point, I kind of looked myself in the mirror and said, am I, you know, how much longer am I going to continue to do this? And I always made a decision myself, or a, I always made an arrangement myself the day I stopped feeling like I could get better, I mean physically or mentally or whatever. That was kind of when I when I knew I hit my peak, that's when I knew I was going to be done. I felt I had a really good year. Um, you know, I didn't think there's much more I was going to do physically to get to, to that next level. So I, I kind of made the decision to switch to coaching. Yeah. And what was your main reason for opening up AP Academy and how rewarding is it to pass on your knowledge of baseball to young kids? Mm, it's awesome. Um, you know, if you told me this was going to be my job 10 years ago, I, would have, I, I don't know if I would have believed you, but we started out in just one little batting cage um, and we always made a priority um, to put quality first and to make sure kids got the most out of our coaches and our information and that's always been at the forefront. Um, so it's really cool for me now to see young guys like yourself come in and get better on a daily basis. Yeah, so the last question. What advice could you give to young baseball players like myself to just keep going mm -hmm. or if they want to go into the major league someday? You know, I think it, my biggest piece of advice would be, especially you know, at your age or 10, 11, 12 years old, is number one, make sure you enjoy every single opportunity you have to play baseball. Baseball needs to be fun. Um, Number two, um, somebody's got to do it. That's, that was how it was told to me. Somebody's got to be the next Bryce Harper. Somebody's got to be the next Mike Trout. The, the next Mike Trout. Um, you know, so for you young guys, you should always be chasing it. And, and never forget that there's someone out there that's working just as hard as you. And they have just as much skill as you. And it's on you to keep pushing yourself and make sure you love that. And that you're not doing it for anybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Pete. Yes, for sir. For your time. Of course. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the NBA playoffs analysis. It will be coming out soon. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace.